Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, for this press conference uh, for our city of Douglas. Uh, before we begin, I want to uh, just add a special word of thanks to our public information staff and all our other staff that help coordinate and put this uh, news conference together. Uh, as always, our staff uh, is remarkable and reacts uh, very quickly and professionally in a manner uh, to do something that's important as this uh, for our community. Uh, we're joined today by uh, some other uh, special guests. Uh, we have Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Josie from our, our, our city, Pro Mayor Pro Tem and City Commissioners Olivia Pearson and Richard Hutchison. Uh, we also have uh, with us uh, our City Manager, Mr. Terrell Jacobs, our Police Chief Gary Castellos, and our Fire Chief, uh, Mr. Tim White, and various members of their staff and other department heads and members of our staff throughout the city. Also, uh, glad to see our good friend, uh, State Representative Chuck Sims, here today. Thank you, Chuck, for, for being here with us today. And uh, one of the victims of uh, one of the arsons in our community, Mr. Benny Dockery, and his family are here with us today. So uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, citizens, for coming. Uh, we very appreciate very much uh, you being here. And also a, a big welcome and a thank you to all our media friends that are here with us today. Uh, covering this uh, news conference. So, as we say, good afternoon. I'm Douglas Mayor James Dennis. Uh, and in the last several weeks, Douglas has become a sector for crime as we've seen an increase in armed robberies, personal property theft, and criminal activity in our city. Several citizens have lost personal property due to break ins. Downtown businesses have been vandalized. Homes have been vandalized. And even a business with a business owner here today was destroyed by fire early Tuesday morning. Toward the end of this week, we are also dealing with another robbery incident which led to one of our Douglas police officers being shot. I'm so happy to announce by the grace of God that this police officer was not seriously injured, was treated and released, and is now back at home. And also because of the cooperative efforts of our state, local, and other critical information provided by our public the criminals were now in custody, or apprehended and are now in custody in the Coffee County Jail. Our prayers for justice and healing are with everyone who was affected by this stream, string of criminal activity. I know that these incidents have caused great concern for Douglas and our citizens and all the Coffee County community. Today I want to hold this press conference in order to inform our citizens that the City of Douglas and investigators of the Douglas Police Department Douglas Fire Department and other agencies are still actively working all these cases. I'm not here today to provide any specific information or to answer questions regarding these investigations because as you could imagine they are still very current and ongoing and we do want to make sure that we don't provide any pertinent information that would hinder this investigation or publicize anything at this time that would prevent us from being successful in our investigations of these criminal activity. It is the desire and the goal of the Douglas Police Department, Douglas the Fire Department, and we, the city officials, to bring these perpetrators to justice as quickly as possible. Having a safe city for our community to work, live, and play is essential to our prosperity. My duty as mayor and as a citizen of Douglas is to ensure, to the best of my ability, a safe community for all of us. I'm eager to assist the Douglas Police Department, Fire Department, in any mass necessary manner to help bring to justice those who committed these crimes and do harm to our citizens in our city. I'm pleased to report and thank the Commission for their actions last night of approving the emergency hire of six part-time police officers so we can put more police officers and have more police presence in the city and therefore we hope will thwart these crimes of vandalism, theft, and robbery and break-ins in our community. To further assist the fire investigations, the Georgia Arson Control Board is offering an award of up to $10,000 leading to the arrest of suspects in these arsons. Anyone with information that could lead to an arrest in these recent fires should call 800-282-5804. That's 800-282-5804. I cannot emphasize enough the value of citizens 
in helping to solve these crimes. If you saw something, if you know something, please, please call our anonymous tip line, 260-3600 or 912-260-3624. We need your help in solving these crimes. Now we'd like to offer some tips for businesses and homeowners to protect their property from theft or arson. Homeowners should consider installing motion detectors for outdoor security lighting or even a security system that will notify 911 and then the owner. Stress that is very important. What we have seen in the past, uh, if you have an emergency and you have a security system, they call the owner first. And the time it takes to call the owner, for the owner to call them back, and then for us to call 911, the crime, the criminal has already done his a working gone. So we need, we have to streamline the time that it takes to get 911 the call to go take care of what's big, what's going on. So I would encourage any of you that have a security system, make sure 911 is the first call that is provided by uh, the security system to the 911 center. There, that will enable our police and fire to react immediately. Then the owner can be notified and hopefully we can stop or prevent what's going on. Never leave spare keys hidden or under a doormat or anywhere around your home. Please lock all your doors, including garage and sheds. Make sure you close all your windows, even when you're out. Even the small windows that you don't think somebody can get in, those are still opportunities that thieves take advantage of. Please keep all flammable materials locked away so they can't have access by uh, these people trying to do harm to us. If you have a weapon, secure it in the best means possible, a vault, a lock and chain, a cable, some, just do not leave them laying around. Uh, please don't make them be an easy target. If you can, remove the high shrubbery from around your areas of opportunity. We have also found that criminals are able to hide, even with it there where they're on the scene, some of them are still hiding in shrubberies and high bushes uh, and we can't see them readily and it just takes us longer to find out. So if, if the area is clean, especially ex excess and uh, egress areas, if we can remove the high shrubbery, and I know very, shrubbery is very precious to all of us, but in certain areas uh, we, we need to uh, remove some of them or cut them down so a, a perpetrator can't hide them or take advantage of them. Uh, especially during the nighttime hours when we're out looking for them. Uh, ask your family or police department to watch your home if you're out of town. Our police department will do that religiously, I promise you. I've uh, had the first-hand knowledge of that. I was out of town last year and I got three calls from uh, Brandon Pruitt wanting to know why a window was open or a door was unlocked. And, uh, and I appreciate that very much. So we will offer that service to the citizens of Douglas. So uh, if you don't have family members that are able to do that for you, Please let our police department know and they will make sure that your place is secure. And then once again, please, I can't stress enough, report any suspicious activity, no matter how minor, how small, report it to the proper authorities uh, with our tip line, 384-2222 is the police department, and we will do everything we can possible to get make sure that, that we get to your area and secure your property and keep people from doing damage to your property. Business owners should also consider installing motion-activated outdoor lighting and security systems. Install a high-quality, high-definition video camera system with a low-lux rating to ensure low-light recording. I don't know what that means, but this guy behind me does, and these guys over here. That guy out there, he told we had a meeting yesterday, and he said, Mr. Mayor, he said, many businesses have cameras, and the cameras work, but when we go there to view the video, we can't make out who the person is that's inside there. And so we don't have any, any help to go identify that person. So, And I know it costs money, and I understand that, but it costs a little bit of money to make sure you have a quality system. It is much easier to do that than try to replace valuable property or damaged property due to a theft or a break-in or something like that. So if you're a business owner, please consider that. And if you need our assistance, we are more than willing to come to your business or your residence to provide you the, some uh, suggestions on how to uh, safeguard your property. Ensure no combustible material is laying around your home. 
piles of leaves, piles of trash, signs, or anything like that that is an easy target for an arson to just throw a match on or a bottle of gasoline and run away and then we have a huge fire like we've been dealing with. Uh, so please clean up around your places uh, and, and it's easy to get complacent and you say well I'll clean it up tomorrow, I'll clean it up the next day uh, and those things just accumulate over time and we know that, we're all guilty of that. So uh, just uh, do a quick walk around of your business, your establishment, your home and make sure that those things are, are taken care of and it uh, might prevent uh, a huge disaster. Uh, remove any items from outside your business that are not secure. Uh, removal of excess posters, banners, uh, make sure all windows are clear. Uh, we talked about the shrubbery. Um, make sure that you limit the number of entrances and exits to as many as possible, but don't block the fire exits. Leave lights on at night. Leave lights on in your business. Again, when our meeting the other day, Mr. Mayor, if we could see into the business and see somebody in there, if the business is dark, then we, we drive by, we don't see anybody in there, we, nothing's going on, but if we ride by during the day, nighttime hours when the business is closed, we see activity in there, then we can stop and, and maybe stop a, a crime that's going on. So uh, please uh, consider that when you're trying to uh, build your uh, defense guard system to uh, keep these folks from, from messing up your property. Make it hard for these criminals and arsonists to do damage to your property or steal your property. Whatever you can do, uh, please do that. Ask, like I say, ask your folks if you're out of town to uh, to help keep a watch on things, and we'll be more than happy to do that as well. Uh, like I said, our police department is more than happy to go to your business or home and give you suggestions in making your areas okay, uh, your your homes and places safe. Vehicles. We've had a multitude of break-ins lately in uh, in specific areas of town, and why? Because they are very easy targets of opportunity. We have a person that had a money bag laying in the car and the car got broken into and the money bag got stolen. We have a uh, somebody that left a, an iPhone in their car and the car got broken into and the iPhone got stolen. Please lock your stuff up in your trunk or remove it from the car altogether. Don't leave your keys in your car. If you have an alarm or a mobilizer, Use it every time you park. Don't get complacent and say, well, it's not going to happen to me. Because as sure as you do, it's going to happen to you. And then we have a whole lot of problems that you have to deal with and we have to deal with. And uh, it just makes it, it would make it easier for you and a lot less stress on you if you just do the smart things to protect your own property. Don't leave any valuables laying around in display. Like I said, put them in the trunk. Don't leave, especially firearms in and around where people can see them, they are visible. It took 30 seconds, 30 seconds the other night for a window to be broken, a perpetrator to go in a business and steal five or six guns and get out the door. 30 seconds. To how long, you know how long it took the alarm system to call, they call the owner and then call 911? You know, four or five minutes. That person was long gone, long gone. So we have to make it hard for the criminals to do their uh, their business. So if we take those precautions, then we can stop some of it. And, uh, don't be a target of opportunity. More importantly, report any irregular or suspicious activity in your neighborhood, in and around your business, uh, to our, again, I can't put it enough, to our tip line, 260-3600, or call 911. Please, please use this opportunity to Reevaluate yourself, reevaluate your business, and think about what you do, what you need to do to secure your property. I know the investigators of the Douglas Police Department, Fire Department, and other agencies will continue to work tirelessly, pursuing all information and all leads, and hoping to bring those responsible to justice. These investigators and I are asking for the public's help in providing any information that will lead to the arrest and convictions of those responsible for these crimes. I urge all our citizens to remain calm and vigilant. Don't be complacent. Our investigators continue to work these cases and follow up on leads. We cannot let the criminals control our lives. I continue to roam our streets of our dear town that we so love. We are a close-knit community, so we must help protect one another. We cannot allow our community to be a target for senseless crimes. Please report any suspicious activity 
to our Say Something Say Something tip line, as we already said, 260-3600. Witness anything, please immediately call 911. That way, the information gets to the police and the fire department, and we can respond and provide you the assistance that you need to help curb this criminal activity uh, in our community. Uh, I think, uh, Chief, if I'm not wrong, the uh, the reason that we were able to apprehend the criminal from the robbery, we had a tip from a local person. A local a local tip from a local person helped us solve the, the burglary crime the other night where the officer got shot. So information from the public is invaluable. Our guys work tirelessly to make sure to follow every lead, but it's so much easier and so much quicker and faster if we can get the public's assistance. And I know sometimes people are afraid to do that, and I understand that because they fear repercussions uh, and doing harm to them, but uh, please uh, do the right thing and help us with that because we want to make sure we we do everything humanly possible to stop this uh, wave of crime that's uh, in our city. I, along with the Douglas Police Department and the Fire Department, want to thank the Coffee County Sheriff's Department, the local GBI office, the State Fire Marshal's office for all the assistance they provided in these investigations. Again, the investigators of the Douglas Police Department and the Fire Department are actually pursuing every lead to obtain the necessary probable cause for an arrest and evidence needed for prosecution of the crimes uh, in the past couple of weeks. Cannot again stress the importance enough for information regarding these crimes to come forward from the public. There are people out there who have information that we know is relevant to, the, relevant to these criminal investigations that will help take these people off our streets. So I again encourage all our citizens, if you know anything or have information, please contact investigators, the Douglas Police Department, 260-3624, or again call our tip line, 260-3600. Thank you very much. This is our community. Help us keep our community safe and our families safe. Thank you again. I appreciate you being here. And God bless you all. Thank you.